In this video, we're going to actually do some examples on completing the square and use it to solve quadratic equations. So I have the steps for completing the square in this box. Uh, write C on both sides, take half the linear term, square the result of the number, factor, and then solve for x. So we're going to go through all these steps with this example to kind of show the explanation. So if we take a look, what we're going to want to do is we cannot solve this as is. And so we're going to try and create a perfect square. The process you use is to you know, write quote unquote C on both sides, which means we're going to insert a placeholder for that C value. And if you think about it, if you're going to add C on the left side to keep the equation balanced, you're going to have to do it on the right side. The key to being able to complete the square easily is organization of work. And so now we follow that process we used before. You're going to take half, I'll do it over on the side here, of your linear term. So negative 6x, so I'm going to take half of negative 6, divide by 2. So half of negative 6 is negative 3. Write this number down. You're going to see why this number is extremely important in the answer. And then you square the resulting number. So we're going to square negative 3. This is crucial to show this step. And like I said, each part you'll see why it's important to show with the final answer. And so what happens is I get 9. Now what you're going to do is you're going to insert that 9 on both sides of the equation. What you created over here is a perfect square, x squared minus 6x plus 9. That's a perfect square trinomial. What happens now is you factor it, or you write down what the binomial is squared that will give you that. And this is where our work comes into play. You know, for x squared, we're going to have an x. To get this 9, I squared a negative 3. And so that's what I'm going to put in the parentheses, a negative 3. So my binomial squared is x minus 3 squared. That, if I were to multiply it out, would yield me this trinomial. And on the right-hand side, 40 plus 9 is 49. We had to put the 9 on both sides to keep the equation balanced. And now we go through the process. You know, How do you solve for this x? Well, right now this x is contained inside of a parentheses. It's protected but that parentheses is being squared. So what we can do is we can cancel out the squared by taking the square root of both sides. The square and square root cancel each other out, so I'm left with x minus 3. Remember, now that you're solving for x, when you take the square root, you're going to have to deal with the plus or minus of the square root of 49, which is 7. And so now if I want to solve for x, I have a minus 3 here, so I'm going to have to move it to the other side. So x minus 3 goes plus or minus 7. I'm going to add 3, so it becomes a positive 3. And I'm going to put that in front of the plus or minus 7. And so what this tells me is my answer. There's two of them. One where x is equal to 3 plus 7, which is 10. And one where x is equal to 3 minus 7 which is negative 4. So x equals negative 4 or 10. The key to this whole process is organization and showing of work. There is no shortcuts beyond this to make it any easier. This process allows us to see what number goes inside of a binomial, allows us to see what number to add to both sides. I mean, you have to square root, and you're going to have to break it apart from there. So that is example 3. Example 4 is along the same lines of this. I have x squared minus 8x plus 4 equals 0. Now what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to rewrite this. If we were to go back to example 3, we would see that our quadratic and linear term were by themselves. In order to complete the square, we have to get this isolated. So I'm going to move that 4 to the other side. So I have x squared minus 8x equals negative 4. Now I can insert my placeholders, x squared minus 8x plus whatever my c value is going to be. 
equals negative 4 plus whatever the c value is. You have to put it on both sides. Now we complete the square. We take half our linear term, so half of negative 8 is negative 4. Show this work. This number is extremely important, we saw. Square that number, it gives me a positive 16. That is your C value. That goes in both placeholders. And now we can factor or we can figure out what is the binomial squared that yields x squared minus 8x plus 16. And that's where our work comes into play. You know, x, x gives me x squared. And to get that 16, I squared a negative 4. So I'm going to put x minus 4. And then I have negative 4 plus 16, which is 12. So I have completed the square. I created my binomial squared. I want to solve for x. But right now it's protected by this parentheses, but that parentheses is being squared. So I can cancel that squared out by taking the square root of both sides. You know, the squared and square root cancel each other out, so you're left with x minus 4. Over to the side, I'll go ahead and simplify the square root of 12, do the prime factorization, it's 4 and 3. 2 and 2, you have a pair of 2's, so you can take out 1, 2, with a 3 remaining inside. So I have plus or minus, remember, since you're solving and taking the square root, 2 square root of 3. To finish solving for x, you need to get it by itself. So you have a minus 4 on that side. So you're going to cancel that out by adding 4, which means it's going to be positive on the other side. So I'll put that in front of the plus or minus. So you have 4 plus or minus 2 square root of 3. And that is your answer. So we just saw two examples of completing the square, the process. And like I said, the key is showing your work. You isolate the quadratic and linear term, if it's not done so already. Take half the linear term, square it. Put that on both sides to keep the equation balanced. And then find the binomial that was squared would yield this result, which is based off of showing your work and looking at what number you squared. Square root both sides and solve for x. There's a couple more videos for examples to develop your understanding.